Hi everyone, this is Mitch with Video Game Explain, and today we are going to attempt to take a look at the lore and story of Absalav, End of Gods, which was released in 2019 by the Swedish Angry Demon Studios. In this atmospheric horror adventure, you take control of a woman traveling between strange worlds, evading horrible mythological creatures, and attempting to understand your past and determine a future for an Earth thrown into chaos. This game is heavily tied to Norse mythology, with references to several gods and realms throughout the game. Later, we even learn where our main protagonist fits into Norse mythology and how that influences her throughout the game. As a reminder, this video will spoil the entire game, so make sure to play it first. The link to buy the game off of Steam is in the description below. Our story begins in the shoes of the main protagonist being operated on by a surgical machine with a temperamental personality. Our character, who we'll refer to as Alice, is held down by the unpleasant machine which brutally augments her eye, giving Alice the ability of the sight. The machine asks Alice to test her sight by activating it and choosing a rune from her past, but grows incredibly upset when Alice selects the incorrect rune. We learn that some sort of spirit is in possession of the surgical machine when it departs the room and prepares to make remediations to Alice's augmentations. Suddenly, exhaust vents open from the floor and, seeing her chance, Alice slips into the vents and makes her escape. In the vents, Alice finds a recording from Dr. Heinrich Anderson, who is the CEO of the company that owns the facility. Heinrich explains that the company, Borcorp, in their pursuit to find and exploit the relics from the Nine Worlds of Yagdrasil, a mythical tree that connects the Nine Worlds in Norse cosmology, have somehow allowed creatures, including the spirit who inhabited the surgical machine, to enter the human world of Midgard. The roots of the tree have also spread through the facility and the Earth's crust, triggering devastating earthquakes and compounding the destruction caused by the creatures from the other eight worlds worlds. The spirit appears to be the leader of the malicious creatures. Once it learns that Alice has escaped the surgical room, it commands its creatures, including the giant mythical beast Fenrir, to hunt her down. Alice uses her sight to follow the symbols laid out by Heinrich, which leads her to an open route of Yggdrasil. Alice travels through the route and lands in Helheim, which, in Norse mythology, is reserved for souls who did not die in honorable death. Souls that did die a valiant death in combat go to Asgard, but everyone else ends up here. As Alice is making her way through Helheim, she's assaulted by demons who rip off her arm, making her first mark in the Alice getting her arm ripped off tally. At the last minute, Alice is saved by Heinrich, who drags her away into his lab. When Alice wakes up, she sees a robotic arm augmentation, has replaced her lost appendage, and learns more about the situation from Heinrich and his wife, Dr. Sarah Anderson, who is currently on the surface and can only communicate with the two by radio. Heinrich first explains that Alice's new arm augmentation, called Yonkraper, is a powerful weapon charged by Atrium, which is the power that Borkorp is siphoning from Thor's hammer Mjolnir, which they recently excavated. Yonkraper can shoot pulses to unlock doors and interfere with technology. Additionally, it can be charged as a blast to damage or eliminate foes. Recharge stations and portable power cells are difficult to come by, so Alice must balance stealth and combat to get around foes. A quick Norse mythology note, Atrium is named after the dwarf king Atri, who forged Mjolnir. Yonkraper is named after one of Thor's most crucial possessions, a pair of iron gloves that Thor uses to handle Mjolnir. Heinrich also reveals that once Yagdrasil was discovered by Borkorp, they used technology to tap into the titular magical artifact known as the Absalov, the controller of the roots of Yggdrasil and necessary for the easy and safe passage between the nine worlds. According to legend as documented in Recording 13, the Absalov was created by a giant who was given a deal that if he created a wall fortification around Asgard, the home world of the gods, in a set amount of time, he could marry the goddess Freya. Just days before the wall was to be completed, the gods cheated the giant by stealing his stallion, who was essential to completing the wall. To add insult to injury, the giant's head was destroyed by Thor and his hammer. In the game, instead of the wall being built, 
What was actually built was the Absolov, which is a structure capable of shutting out the roots of Yggdrasil and opening them to the one controlling it. Heinrich laments that a spirit, the same one that was operating on Alice at the beginning of the game, made its way to Midgard, which, as a reminder, is our world, the realm of the humans in where Borkorp is situated. The spirit took control of the Absalov and all systems within Borkorp, causing Heinrich to enact an emergency override which sealed the facility. Despite Heinrich's action, catastrophic problems still persist and humanity is at risk of extinction. Sarah states that only by collecting the nine skull keys used to control the Absalov will Alice and Heinrich be able to prevent further damage and seal off Midgard from the other worlds. Luckily, six are already in possession and Alice only needs to retrieve three more. The first key is located in the icy, cold, primordial world of Niflheim. After Alice jumps through a route of Yggdrasil to Niflheim, she picks up a recording to learn that a previous outpost was attempted in this world by the War Corp, but fell victim to 48 casualties due to the natives. The natives of Niflheim are the frost giants and are keen to disrupt the human activity taking place in their lands. If the ice giants don't kill the Borkorp scientists, the bitter cold certainly will. A fate met by one of the Niflheim scientists who held onto the Absolve key as he froze to death in a locker within the base. Alice grabs the key, evades the watchful gaze of nearby frost giants, and makes her way back to Midgard through another route. Alice returns to the Borkorp facility and Heinrich instructs her to find his laboratory so he can analyze the key. Along the way, Alice enters the large research area containing the Absalov and learns through a recording that Heinrich's intentions for using the Absalov and siphoning the power of the gods are not clear and maybe has something to do with Heinrich's daughter, who has moved into one of the advanced care medical units in the facility. Another recording reveals that Heinrich has little regard for the safety of the scientists and is in instead obsessed with learning more about the power available through the instruments of the gods. But having no other real choice, Alice continues to follow Heinrich and Sarah's instructions until she can learn more about herself and the facility. When Alice returns to Heinrich's lab, he's dismissive of Alice's concerns of her being used as a pawn to find the keys for the Absalov without being given any other information. Ignoring Alice's questions, Heinrich instructs Alice to make her way back to the facility. Along the way, Heinrich admits that he really isn't sure who Alice is or where she came from since her creation occurred after the spirit took over at the Borkort facility. Since Alice still has no memory of her past, Heinrich asks her to re-establish a link to the facility's database so that Heinrich can access the information surrounding Alice's origins. After Alice successfully dodges around a litany of small and ferocious trolls, she re-establishes the link and learns from Heinrich that the database shows she is a meld of a female subject also named Alice and artifact tissue, meaning tissue found at a research site in another world. Alice also stumbles upon some recordings recounting how a group of researchers drank blood that spilled from the roots of Yggdrasil with no hesitation after being seduced to do so by the spirit. The spirit said that drinking the blood would be the only way to achieve immortality in their mortal forms but fail to mention that they would become the spirit's eternal slaves at the same time. These new slaves followed the spirit's bidding, including creating Alice and Fenrir, the giant wolf creature tasked with tracking her down. We also learned that Fenrir was incredibly protective of Alice during her creation for some reason. Heinrich grows frustrated and instructs Alice to continue searching for the keys. Sarah chimes in again, directing Alice to return to Niflheim to find the next key for the Absalov. Alice returns to Niflheim to outpost N527. Upon landing in Niflheim, Alice learns that morale at outpost N527, similar to outposts in the other worlds, was exceptionally low. One researcher who joined the team at this outpost, Dr. Lisa Svensson, experienced severe depression once she arrived in the icy world of Niflheim. Through recordings found at this outpost and the Borkorp research facility, it is apparent that Lisa was transferred to the icy, unforgiving outpost in Niflheim by Heinrich as punishment for speaking out about the dangerous nature of the artifacts being covered and abused by the Borkorp. 
At this point, it is clear Heinrich was working obsessively to find something among these worlds and would persecute anyone that got in his way. The next key is located on a beacon of light atop a mountain in Niflheim. Alice scrambles past the intense gaze of the frost giants, makes her way to the top of the mountain, and grabs the next Absolof key, only to be ambushed by a frost giant who knocks her off the mountain. As the frost giant closes in for the kill, our faithful canine, Fenrir, who was initially instructed by the spirit to capture us, instead saves her life before retreating into a nearby ice cave. We can rest assured that Fenrir is, in fact, a good boy. Alice then returns to the Borkor facility through a route of Yagdrasil. Upon Alice's return, Heinrich urges her to return to his lab after inserting the key into the Absolve tablet so that he can show her something. At the lab, Heinrich assaults Alice as soon as she walks through the door, choking her out and killing her. Alice awakens in another world. Rings rotate around the body of the world and a large hole flanked by rune circles stands in the middle. Once Alice moves some magical orbs onto these runes, she gains the ability to return to her body in the real world, resurrected. Once Alice awakens, Heinrich explains that Alice entered the spirit's lair when she died and that he thinks the spirit is Loki, the Norse god of mischief. Sarah thinks that this is a far-fetched idea, but before she can continue, Alice retorts in anger, probably from being killed without her consent, among other things. However, Heinrich and Sarah state that Alice has been the only person who can reach the lair, so she will be instrumental in returning to the lair to defeat the spirit. Despite Alice's anger toward Heinrich and Sarah, Sarah convinces her to pick up the last key needed for the Absalov and to retrieve another artifact, the Eye of Odin, in the world of Jotunheim near the Well of Wisdom. In Norse mythology, Odin is said to have sacrificed one of his eyes at this Well of Wisdom to see further into the future than any god had seen before. Sarah states that when Alice returns to the spirit's lair and blesses the ores with the Eye of Odin before placing them on the runes, she will destroy the lair and the spirit along with it. It turns out that Heinrich has found a root that leads to the Well of Wisdom and, like Odin before him, sacrificed one of his eyes for wisdom. It didn't work. So Heinrich had to fashion an artificial eye equipped with the same powers of vision that the spirit granted to Alice. With Heinrich's help, Alice makes her way to the Well of Wisdom in Jotunheim through root of Yagdrasil in the Borkort Waste Treatment Plant. After Alice's arrival, she drops deep into a dark cave and must navigate past large leech creatures to finally locate the Eye of Odin and the last key needed to control the Absalov. Alice avoids an army of leeches, finds a root, then returns to the Borkort facility. Once there, Sarah jumps on the intercom in distress saying that she lost connection with Heinrich and that the spirit is taking over the base again. So Alice must hurry and insert the final key into the Absolve tablet. When Alice inserts the key into the tablet, she's shot back and killed from a shockwave from the Absolve. Alice once again awakens in the spirit's lair, equipped with the tools necessary to destroy it once and for all. The spirit remarks that he gracefully extends usage of his lair to Alice so that she could remain immortal and not be sent to Helheim upon her death, and she has been ungrateful by trying to destroy it. Alice remembers what Sarah instructed her to do and enchants the magical orbs with the Eye of Odin, places them on the runes and destroys the lair all while evading the spirit. Alice reawakens in the Borkort facility to Sarah's voice emanating from the spirit, who is very much not dead and now physically exists in Midgard without having to use the machines in the facility. At this point, it is clear that the spirit has been pretending to be Dr. Sarah Anderson, Heinrich's wife, over the intercom this entire time, and closing its lair did not kill it. Sarah, as the spirit in disguise, was so insistent on Alice finding the keys to the Absalov and locating the eye of Odin so that it could free itself from its lair as soon as possible. The nine keys did not cause the Absalov to close Yagdrasil, but actually completely open travel between the nine worlds for both the spirit and any other creatures. The spirit celebrates this success, as this returns the universe to the state before the gods selfishly close travel for everyone but them. The spirit pushes Alice into a sharp root which stabs her through the abdomen. At the last minute, Fermer jumps in and tries to save Alice by attacking the spirit. It isn't enough, and the spirit slices open Fenrir's neck, killing the beast. 
To be safe, the spirit, taking a play from the demons at the beginning of the game, rips off Alice's arm again, making our second mark in the Alice getting her arm ripped off tally. The spirit reminds Alice that she can no longer use its lair, removes her from the stem, and snaps her neck. Alice awakens in Helheim. The world of Helheim is for those souls who did not die a warrior's death and is ruled by Hel, Loki's daughter. Persistent, Alice wanders through Helheim, evading demons and other obstacles, eventually finding a route back to Midgard, but without the eye augmentation that gave her the gift of sight nor the young raper. Alice stumbles upon a recording where Heinrich discovers that Loki's blood is the key to immortality and soon the grasp of sickness will be lifted. It is important to note that this is probably the same blood that the researchers drank, which caused them intense pain and left them as slaves. It is revealed through a nether log recorded by Sarah, the real Sarah, not the spirit's impersonation of Sarah, that Loki, as punishment for deceiving the other gods, had a wooden mask adhered to his face to prevent him from shapeshifting and to be instantly recognizable. We know that the spirit at Borcorp has a wooden mask and made scientists drink its blood, so we can now confirm that the spirit is in fact Loki. This might be why Loki, who was impersonating Sarah, was so dismissive when Heinrich figured out the spirit's identity before. Alice rushes to Heinrich's lab, nearly destroyed by the ever-growing roots of Yggdrasil, and Heinrich is split in half, barely hanging on to life. Heinrich apologizes profusely to Alice, not us, but another Alice, for not being able to finish it before nosing us. Jumping into action, Alice grabs the soul stone from a nearby room so that Heinrich can move his soul from his dying body into the stone. Alice then grabs Heinrich's artificial eye, which was empowered with ability of sight, and runs upstairs to grab the young raper that Loki ripped off her body. Heinrich instructs her to go to the surgery room to install both features to her body. In a brutal scene, the surgical machine removes Alice's arm, making her third and final mark in the Alice getting her arm ripped off tally. It then removes her eye and installs the young raper in Heinrich's old artificial eye. After the surgery, Heinrich shares that before Loki he killed him, Loki talked about his own daughter, Hel, who died long ago. Heinrich thinks that Loki, in an attempt to resurrect her, brainwashed the researchers to infuse some of Hel's artificial tissue with a human named Alice's in order to create us, the Alice that we play as. We are the product of Loki trying to resurrect his daughter. This aligns with what Heinrich learned when we reestablished the link to the facility database earlier. The human that Heinrich refers to is probably the same Alice that Heinrich was apologizing to when we found him torn in half in his lab. Heinrich bleakly states that nothing on Midgard can stop Loki in his current form, so Alice must return to Helheim to learn more about why Loki wanted to create us in the first place. Alice returns to the route she used to escape Helheim and returns to the world of the dead. Diving deeper into Helheim, Alice stumbles across the temple of the goddess Hel. Heinrich remembers that those who want to enter the temple must prove themselves, so he instructs Alice to slay some nearby demons who have been the current keepers of Helheim in Hel's absence. In a Doom-esque sequence, Alice uses the young raper to kill the demons in order to gain entrance into the temple. Deep in the temple, Alice finds the corpse of Hel, daughter of Loki, ruler of Helheim, who Heinrich explains was destroyed by the gods as vengeance for Loki's role in the death of Odin's son. For context, the role that Loki played is documented in Recording 12, which states that Loki tricked the blind son of Odin, Hodur, into throwing a spear against his brother, the immortal Baldur. What Hodur didn't realize was that the spear was tipped with mistletoe, the one weakness of Baldur. In retaliation, the gods went on a killing spree, destroying all sons and daughters of Loki and imprisoning him forever. This explains Loki's imprisonment, anger, and death of his daughter, Hel. Upon closer examination of the body, Alice and Heinrich find light emanating from Hel's scythe. When Alice approaches the light, the power of Hel transfers from the scythe to Alice's young graper, imbuing Alice with stronger powers. Heinrich explains that this must mean that Alice truly has the essence of Hel and must be the reincarnation of Hel herself. We can now refer to Alice by her proper name, Hel. By drawing power from the undead around Helheim, Hel departs the temple, destroying countless demons along the way. Hel then returns to Borkort for her final encounter with Loki. Along the way, Hel and Heinrich talk about human life in Midgard when Heinrich reveals that Alice, the woman who Heinrich was apologizing to in his office, and the human that was used to create Hel, 
was his sick daughter who fell ill and could not be saved even with the sophisticated technology of Borcorp. When Sarah and Heinrich first found the Absalov, they were seduced by the voice of the spirit, not knowing that it was Loki. Heinrich explains that, at first, Loki helped cure his daughter Alice and pushed Borkorp's research and exploration to its peak. Then, Loki struck and manipulated the staff, which caused Heinrich to trigger the emergency protocol. Since Hell is a meld of Alice and of Hell's corpse, in a sense, Heinrich and Sarah's daughter, Alice, lives on through Hell. Heinrich and Hell confront Loki, chasing him around the building and dealing devastating blows with the upgraded Young Raper. Loki commends Hell's new powers, stating that her creation is truly a blessing and that he wants to see her wield her abilities at his side. Loki even shows intense joy when Hell has to cut down the research scientists who became slaves of Loki. It is clear that resurrecting Hell was part of Loki's plan to be released from his prison and to have another ruler at his side to control the Nine Worlds. When Hell was being augmented by Loki at the beginning of the game, he grew frustrated that she couldn't remember her background of being Hell and was content with disposing of her. Now that Loki sees Hell's full power realized, does he consider her his true daughter? Hell catches up to Loki and lends a final devastating blow. Loki, before dying, retorts by cutting Hell open, killing her. They are both resurrected in Helheim and confront each other for a final face-off. Loki transforms into a large mass of flesh and attacks Hell using his serpent appendages and minions. Using the Young Raper, Hell is able to overpower Loki in his face with a crucial choice. Should she make a pact to join him and rule over half the worlds, or destroy Loki forever and rebuild Midgard in the aftermath of opening the roots of the Yggdrasil? But what would you do? Comment down below what your choice would be. Thanks for joining me for my first video game explain. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next time. See you later!